Hey, how are you doing? Uh, so we have a, a, an axial loaded problem. Uh, it's a composite section, so it has three different materials in three different uh, diameters over three different lengths, uh, all connected. So the composite bar A, B, C, D is fixed at point A, otherwise freestanding, so it's a determinant problem. And it has a, a current temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, so you know that they're going to throw a, a temperature hook at us. And the bar is composed of three materials, each with a circular cross-section, as shown in the diagram. And then we have a, a, the material properties, so modulus elasticity, the um, coefficient of thermal expansion, and the diameters for each of the sections uh, given. And it says, determine the reaction at A in kilonewtons. Uh, draw the axial force diagram, so we'll do that. Uh, determine the displacement at D due to both the loading and a temperature change if the temperature were to increase to 85 degrees Celsius, so uh, from 15. So we'll have to figure out what del delta T is. Okay, so uh, axial force uh, problem. Uh, no, pro We know how to do these, so we're going to jump into a free body diagram. Uh, from there, we can get our reaction and do our axial force diagram, and then we'll talk about what to, to do next. So uh, let's, um, let's do our free body diagram free body diagram and we have three applied forces so we have an axial load to the right at B of 12 kilonewtons we have an axial load at C to the left of 8 kilonewtons and one at the end at D going to the right of 15 kilonewtons. So we know we can have a reaction uh, at A. And we'll just label that reaction at A. And other than showing our coordinate system, so I'll draw X to the right. I think we're doing not bad. Uh, so let's get our reactions. Reaction, there's only one. So we have one equation of static equilibrium. That would be the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. And so working left to right, we have negative Ra plus 12 kilonewtons minus 8 kilonewtons and plus 15 kilonewtons. So we're able to run the math on that. We get a RA of 19 kilonewtons. So I guess we guessed that the, the direction correctly, so we can do that. And we'll just draw that in here as 19 kilonewtons for future uh, work. And uh, I guess we're ready to do the uh, axial force diagram. So let's label it up here. So we have an axial force diagram and I want to indicate the units as kilonewtons so I don't have to draw it in all the time. So we have 19 kilonewtons to the left. And so when I look at the section AB, that's going to be, you know, equal and opposite 19 kilonewtons to the right. So, so we can see that AB is going to be in tension, which we have adopted in our sign convention as positive. So 19 kilonewtons, I'm going to go up to a value of 19 and draw that in. Uh, 19 kilonewtons. And there's no forces applied between there, A and B. So we can go across as horizontal. Uh, then we have 12 kilonewtons going to the right. So that's going to drop us down. 12. So if we're at 19, I should label that 19. Uh, so what's that take us down to 7? So if I draw a drop or discontinuity in our graph down to 7, then we can go across because there's no forces applied between B and C. You have 8 kilonewtons to the left, so that's going to increase us. So 7 plus 8 is going to take us up to 15 and go across 
and we get 15 which takes us back to zero and we know we needed to arrive back at zero so we're fairly confident that we got this correct so uh, i'm feeling pretty good about that i think that's our axial force diagram so now we're ready to carry on in part b so we need displacements uh due to uh, or at d and we have a temperature change. So we have two formulas that we're working with. Let me just write those down. So displacement due to axial load is, and I'm gonna put it in as a summation, just to remind us that we need to look at each of the sections because they're discontinuous sections. The sum of P and I, L and I, E and I, A and I. And so, Forces we have because we have our axial force diagram. Of course, those are internal forces off the axial force diagram. The lengths over which they applied is on our diagram, so we can get those. We have E's, they were given in the problem. Areas, so we don't have our areas, so we're going to need those. And the other formula we have is our displacement due to temperature change is equal to alpha delta T times our length. And so our coefficients of thermal expansion are provided. And of course, that would also be a summation. So let's do that and put in some I's. Uh, delta T, we have to calculate, and our lengths are given. So why don't we go ahead and do the areas for each of our sections? Uh, so what do we know? So we know... Um, let's do this. Calculate areas. So we know area is equal to pi r squared. So area of the brass is equal to pi times the radius squared, which is equal to pi times the radius. So it gives a diameter of 75 millimeters. So 75 millimeters divided by two is a radius all squared. And I got a value of 4417.9. 4417.9 millimeters squared. Then we have the area of our steel. Again, pi r squared equals to pi. Uh, the diameter is 50 millimeters, so 50 millimeters divided by 2 all squared. And I got a value of 1963.5. Millimeters, uh, millimeters all squared. And then finally we have our copper. And it has a diameter of 40. So 40 millimeters divided by two all squared. And I got a value of 1256. 0.6 millimeters square. And so now we're ready to calculate our deflections. And so our deflections are going to be a, the sum of the deflection due to the load and the sum and the deflection due to the temperature change. And superposition tells us we can just add those together. So why don't we do those separately and then just add them together so we can see it. So the first we'll start with our deflection due to our load and there's it's going to be applied over three sections so let's just do this sum of p at i l at i over e at i a at i we should have all of our information now so we're going to go brass steel copper work our way left to right and so off our axial force diagram we have 19,000 newtons over a length of 200 millimeters, all divided by E of brass. And what is the E of brass? So it's 100 gigapascals. So we know that's 100,000 megapascals to get compatible units. And our area is in millimeters squared. So that's good. So our brass is 4417.9 millimeters squared and so that would be the deflection 
in the brass itself. And now we have to do the deflection in the steel. So again, the load off our axial force diagram is 7,000 newtons over a length of 170 millimeters, all divided by our E for the steel is 200,000 uh, megapascals. And finally, our area of the steel is 1,963.5 millimeters squared. And finally, we have our deflection in the copper. And so the load in the copper from our axial force diagram, 15,000 newtons over a length of 150 millimeters, all divided by our E of copper. Uh, look up here and see, get what our E of copper is. Well, there it is, 120 GPA, so 120,000 megapascals. And our area of 1,256.6 millimeters squared. And that tells us if we run the numbers and I didn't make a mistake, then we should get a deflection of 0, 0.0. 265 millimeters and they're all positive and positive to us is tension so I'm going to note that that is an elongation so not too much fairly low loading in this case and so then we're going to do the deflection due to our temperature change and so what is our delta T uh, let's figure that out. So delta T is equal to 85 degrees Celsius minus 15 degrees Celsius equals 70 degrees Celsius. So we can put that in here. So this is the sum of alpha at I delta T L at I. And so alpha for our brass is 21 times 10 to the minus six per degree Celsius. Our delta T we said was 70 degrees Celsius. And our, our length, 200 millimeters. And we're just gonna carry on and do that for each of them. So our alpha for the steel, 12 times 10 to the minus six per degree Celsius. 70 degrees Celsius, length of 170 millimeters. And finally, let's get our copper. And so we have 17 times 10 to the minus six per degree Celsius, 70 degrees Celsius, and a length of 150 millimeters. And so we can get our deflection there. It's going to be 0 0.6153 millimeters. And again, this is warming up. Our temperature change is positive, which means it's going to also be an elongation. And so our total displacement at D then is equal to our delta due to the load plus our delta due to our temperature change. And so we basically take our two values here, 0 0.0265 millimeters plus 0 0.6153 millimeters. And we get a total displacement equal to 0 0.6418 millimeters. And again, I will note that that's an elongation so there's perfect clarity. And let's uh, come up here and displacement at D. They asked for a reaction so we can identify that. And so that's our reaction at A. And they asked for the axial force diagram. They know where to find that. 
So that's it. Uh, so simple application of superposition, calculating deflections as a result of the load and the temperature change independently and adding them together to get the overall deflection at the end of the, uh, uh, the shaft. Uh, so hopefully that was helpful to you and we'll see you at the next problem.